4.35 p.m. Harrisburg around 4.40 p.m. Other locations in the path of this tornadic thunderstorm include Lake Alvin State Recreation Area. Take cover now. Move to a basement or an interior room on the lowest floor of a sturdy building. Avoid windows. If you are outdoors, in a mobile home, or in a vehicle, move to the closest substantial shelter and protect yourself from flying debris. Repeating, a tornado warning has been issued until 5 p.m. for the following counties in South Dakota, Lincoln and Turner. As this storm continues to move on over. This is a view south and west, more so to the west than anything else. Our camera is unfortunately not cooperating at a very good time. So we're trying to keep this steady and in one position at the moment. So there we go. We're going to try and keep this right about here. So we're going to keep our Harrisburg camera up just for a moment as we continue to monitor this tornado warning again. This is headed toward the Harrisburg area, Worthing T right there. There is our rotation right there. We can circle that actually pretty well just north of Worthing. And that's right along 278th Street, north of Worthing, as this continues to move to the east. So this will go down along the southern portion of Harrisburg. You need to seek shelter immediately as the storm continues to move on through the area. We are also going to put out the All Points Bulletin toward the Klondike area. Canton on the northern edge, Elm Springs as well. Granite, Schindler, all of you need to seek shelter immediately for this very powerful storm that continues to move over to the east. Now, this started to show rotation actually a decent bit away east of Hurley and toward Lenox. Uh, we started to get reports of a wall cloud that was starting to show some rotation in the Lenox area. And not too long after we got that report, that was when the tornado warning uh, was issued in Lenox and now has continued to move over to the east. It's still showing right there that hook right over the I-29 corridor over the last five or so minutes as this continues to surge over to the east. We've also been getting reports of two-inch diameter hail or more uh, from this cell as, been, as it has also been moving to the east. Further to the north, uh, we do have severe thunderstorm warnings, by the by, for portions of Minnehaha County, including the Sioux Falls and Brandon area. This is on the north end of the cell. So you can still see gusty winds and hail in association with this storm up to the northern part of this uh, storm. But it's also going to be down to the south where we are really going to keep a very close eye on what we have going on here. So here's another view. This is down now to the south and west. This is looking southwest. We'll move this over on Harrisburg a little bit more with some rather ominous looking clouds uh, moving south and east of the Harrisburg area. So again, this is a tornado warning in effect for northeast Eastern Turner County and northwestern portions of Lincoln County, even headed into the northeastern Lincoln County area until 5 p.m. Central Daylight Time. We are going to continue the warning. Uh, this is an update to the tornado warning that we still have. This is located south of Harrisburg. Again, a south of Harrisburg tornado warning. Tornado confirmed on the ground north of Canton, now moving east. It's been picking up speed now at 55 miles per hour. This was originally uh, slated at 45 miles per hour. Now we have this moving at 55 miles per hour uh, to the east. You can even see, uh, just looking at our clouds, this is a very, very fast moving storm as this continues to rocket on over to the east. So here is a view south. Here is a view south on our camera here in Harrisburg. There is our storm, and you can see just how quickly this is moving to the east. Again, 55 miles per hour. There's our Harrisburg camera. You can see those very, very ominous skies, not to mention a lot of rain, which could make this particular tornado difficult to see if this does indeed become rain wrapped. So if you are again near Canton, to the north and east, you need to seek shelter immediately. We also have an update from the National Weather Service. A new tornado warning is about to be issued for Lyon County. This is why I mentioned Granite. This is why I mentioned Klondike. This is why I even mentioned Larchwood. This tornado warning is going to be extended eastward into northwestern Iowa. This is why I put the heads up out there. Get into your tornado safe space immediately. 
Again, confirmed tornado on the ground. This is going to be going south of Harrisburg, 55 miles per hour, headed toward the Klondike area, also going just north of Canton to go right along with it. We'll head back over to our Harrisburg camera. You can get a view of just exactly what we've been keeping an eye on. So again, this is a view south on our Harrisburg camera. And we'll move this just a little bit further over to the east. You can see just the ominous, ominous looking clouds overhead as this continues to race eastward. So there's our view due south with this storm with a confirmed tornado on the ground again moving to the east at 55 miles per hour. This has also been capable of producing two inch diameter hail as it has been moving through the area. This warning is going to remain in effect until 5 p.m. Central Daylight Time. And this will be extended and actually just did get extended into Lyon County. This will be until 5.15 p.m. Central Daylight Time now. This is also going to include uh, basically the rest of Lincoln County that was not in this particular warning prior. So again, damaging confirmed tornado on the ground with this warning. Also golf ball sized hail. This is headed toward Larchwood by 450, Leicester by 455, even toward Rock Rapids by a little bit after 5 p.m. This is a very fast moving storm that is going to be headed your way with a confirmed tornado on the ground south of Harrisburg. This is also going to, again, head toward Klondike, head toward Granite, just south of Canton as well. Uh, the new warning has just been populated there. You can see that on our screen right now, the new red flashing box, as this continues to head to the east of the I-29 corridor, uh, headed toward Larchwood, headed toward Leicester. Anybody that's on Iowa 9th Street or in the Leicester area, you guys need to seek shelter immediately. Also, anybody in Klondike, anybody in Granite, continue to seek shelter as the storm continues to race to the east. This has actually been picking up speed as this heads eastward uh, over the next about 30 to 45 minutes. The new tornado warning in effect until 5.15 p.m. Central Daylight Time. This has been a storm that we have been keeping a very, very close eye on, part of a parent system that had initially been showing rotation before it got to the Lennox area. But once it did get to right around Lennox, we did see that rotating wall cloud and then confirmed tornado not too long after the first warning have been issued. Now we still have our second warning just put in. Tornado still confirmed on the ground. This is south of Harrisburg, now moving southeast of Harrisburg at 55 miles per hour due east. This is headed right toward Lyon County, Iowa. And you can barely see uh, what we have going on due to the very National Weather Service in Sioux Falls has issued a tornado warning for Western Lyon County in northwestern Iowa, northeastern Lincoln County in southeastern South Dakota until 5.15 p.m. At 4.39 p.m., a tornado-producing storm was located south of Harrisburg or north of Canton, moving east at 55 miles an hour. Hazard, damaging tornado and golf ball size hail. Source, radar confirmed tornado. Impact. Flying debris will be dangerous to those caught without shelter. Mobile homes will be damaged or destroyed. Damage to roofs, windows, and vehicles will occur. Tree damage is likely. This tornadic storm will be near Larchwood around 4.50 p.m. Luster and Alvord around 4.55 p.m. Other locations in the path of this tornadic thunderstorm include Rock Rapids. To repeat, a tornado is on the ground. Take cover now. Move to a basement or an interior room on the lowest floor of a sturdy building. Avoid windows. If you are outdoors, in a mobile home, or in a vehicle, move to the closest substantial shelter and protect yourself from flying debris. Repeating, a tornado warning has been issued until 5.15 p.m. for the following county, Lyon, Iowa, and Lincoln, South Dakota.
Canton area that's going to continue to move on over to the east. Now I have the Larchwood camera up for a little bit. Now I know what you're going to see uh, in the lower left hand corner is going to say Eagle Butte, but this is indeed Larchwood because I haven't been able to uh, quite find the Larchwood banner there. But this is Larchwood. This is a view down to the uh, down to the west is Larchwood being just about due east what we have going on here. And you notice though the camera just being buffered left and right by incredibly strong winds. This hasn't even uh, gotten to the Larchwood area yet, but this is incredible just to see uh, how much this camera is being jostled around as the storm heads right on over. So there's the update. Uh, kudos to Scott for getting that one over there. Look at that. I mean, but that yeah, is just impressive with our Larchwood live cam. And it the just got knocked just down. Going back and, yeah, I mean, going back and forth, it's just moving down by itself. And the reason why is we go back to Kelo Lane Live Doppler HD. This is the reason why. I know I just showed everybody where we had that, um, that base reflectivity, or I'm sorry, the shear rate, I believe, is what we had up earlier, right here. Yes. And I mentioned Klondike, okay? Now, as we take a look at our reflectivity, that looks impressive. You know, sometimes we mention that the storm gets that uh, hook or that tail in it, and this is really what we have going on right in here near the Klondike areas. I highlight that area. So that gives us a great indication that we do have rotation there, as well as seeing some of the velocity data coming in. Again, that shear rate data right to the west of Klondike, and he showed you the Larchwood. Which we may have just lost. Which we, okay, yeah, it's buffering right now. Of course, you know, there's Larchwood right there as I underline it. So we are looking at this storm moving to the east. Again, we've had confirmed tornadoes with this storm as well as it is moving to the east. And uh, meteorologist Jay Trobeck uh, showing up here as well. He'll give us uh, his thoughts on this, driving through that heavy rain that uh, just is continuing the pound Sioux Falls right now. As again, the storm is moving to the east rather quickly as we continue to watch it here from the storm center. So here's an updated view as to what's going on. The one thing that we have to watch with these storms is if they're by themselves, oh, we got they a new have tornado warning that just came up. Okay. Yep, new one just came up. If you're in Sioux Falls watching, these tornado warnings are just what looks like it's right near the Schindler area. Let's go ahead and bring up that shear rate again. You know, the shear rate's doing a great job where we do have these red areas here, right in the middle of your screen near Schindler. That is moving to the east and slightly to the northeast, and that's that new tornado warning that just came out. Yeah, so let's get the information on that. That's going to be for northeastern portions of uh, Lincoln County. This includes, again, the Harrisburg and the Schindler areas as well. This is for radar indicated rotation. This is up from the parent system, not uh, part of the warning that's down south of it toward uh, Klondike and eventually into uh, central portions of Lyon County where we have that confirmed tornado. This is actually a little bit further north of that, still showing radar indicated rotation. So this is for northwestern Lyon, southwestern Rock, southeastern Minnehaha, and north central Lincoln counties until 4 15, until 5 15 p.m. rather as the storm moves to the east at 40 miles per hour. Again, radar indicated rotation, uh, the key phrase here. This is going to be headed toward Rowena, large wind and valley springs as well within the next about uh, 10 to 15 minutes. This will also head toward uh, Hills, Lester, and Beaver Creek next 10 to 15 minutes as this storm really does start to uh, wind itself up. Now this one, again, radar indicated rotation. Uh, we got a rotation couple just National Weather Service in Sioux Falls has issued a tornado warning for northwestern Lyon County in northwestern Iowa, southwestern Rock County in southwestern Minnesota, southeastern Minnehaha County in southeastern South Dakota, north central Lincoln County in southeastern South Dakota, until 5.15 p.m. At 4.44 p.m., a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located over Lake Alvin State Recreation Area, 47 miles southeast of Sioux Falls, moving east at 40 miles an hour. Hazard, tornado and quarter-size hail. Source, radar indicated rotation. Impact, flying debris will be dangerous to those caught without shelter. Mobile homes will be damaged or destroyed. Damage to roofs, windows, and vehicles will occur. Tree damage is likely. This dangerous storm will be near Rowena around 4.55 p.m. Larchwood and Valley Springs around 5 p.m. 
Other locations in the path of this tornadic thunderstorm include Hills, Lester, and Beaver Creek. Take cover now. Move to a basement or an interior room on the lowest floor of a sturdy building. Avoid windows. If you are outdoors, in a mobile home, or in a vehicle, move to the closest substantial shelter and protect yourself from flying debris. Repeating, a tornado warning has been issued until 5.15 p.m. for the following county, Lyon, Iowa, and Rock, Minnesota, and the following counties, in South Dakota, Lincoln and Minnehaha. p.m. was okay. when we had the confirmed uh, tornado warning with that particular cell. Okay. Okay, if you're just Everybody joining us, yeah, what you're looking at is the uh, the areas in yellow where you have the yellow box flashing. That is a severe thunderstorm warning. The flashing red boxes are tornado warnings all around the Sioux Falls metro, but particularly the southeast side of the city. That is where we do have the uh, tornadic cells that we've been keeping an eye on here for the past several minutes. And that is going to continue that trend over. We see no reason for it to slow down or to stop. Those cells have got plenty of energy to work with. You know that if you're outside today all the humidity we have had in place and that is going to be uh, fueling those thunderstorms for the next several minutes again flashing yellow is severe thunderstorm flashing red is tornado warnings and here's a look at it once again. You can see the area in red here. That's where we have very heavy rainfall. Here are your tornado warnings going across the border into Hills, Minnesota, and in the northwestern tip of Iowa, Larchwood area in particular. These areas just on the southeast side of Sioux Falls, the leading edge of that cell, that's where we've seen the tornadic activity. That's where the radar is indicating some spin in the atmosphere. And that is kind of the same areas that uh, were producing the uh, tornado that was observed a bit a while ago. Those uh, tornadoes are going to continue to move in a northeasterly direction for the next several minutes here. We're watching just at the leading edge of that. So while there isn't much going on except for very heavy rain around the Sioux Falls area, particularly on the southeast side, that is the tornadic part of that thunderstorm. And Scott just did a, uh, a storm track on it, Scott. Those are, or I'm sorry, Adam, the projected uh, times. Yeah, so we got a large wood somewhere within the next about uh, five to eight minutes, 4.58 p.m. This is assuming 40 miles per hour. The southern edge has been moving Moving a little bit faster than the northern edge, but right around 4:55 p.m. for for Larchwood, Lester a little bit right around 5 to 5:05 p.m. Hills 5:08. Then we get over toward Rock Rapids about quarter after five, and then kind of around the end 5:28 uh, p.m. headed into uh, portions of southwestern uh, Minnesota, south of the I-90 corridor. Again, this is assuming everything goes at 40 miles per hour. The southern part has been moving a bit faster than the northern counterpart. That's been 55 miles per hour compared to 40. But either way, we're talking about large within the next five to ten minutes. Uh, Lester within the next five to ten minutes, even toward Inwood, uh, right along the southern edge of that first warning within the next five to ten minutes. Yes, this is the parent cell here, the big area in red. Of course, heavy rain coming down in Sioux Falls. Some gusty winds as well. But this is the dangerous part of the cell. This is where we've seen the tornadic activity. You see the flashing red boxes. Those there, those are your tornado warnings. And the whole movement, as Adam was just telling, moving in a northeasterly direction, heading up toward Canaranzai, Minnesota continue to move to the east. We have severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings in this area. We could have kind of all forms of severe weather possible out of that cell as it moves to the northeast. You want to pop up the Larchwood camera right there just to show you we did get it back, but uh, it's oh. not looking too good. That's uh, Larchwood. Harrisburg, you can see the heavy rain that's falling in that area. Of course, the uh, tornadic parts of the cell now moving from Harrisburg to the northeast. And this one looks like in a lot of places. We're getting some pretty good rainfall right now in the Sioux Falls area, maybe even going to be causing some urban flooding here because of all the heavy rain that is coming down at the present time. We're kind of uh, kind of moving along and this is just uh, popping up our live cam network here, taking a look good at some time. of the various places around the area. Here's uh, so Larchwood. That's, uh, here's Larchwood again. You're kind of staring down because the winds have just pushed that camera right down to the side. We do have a lot of wind along with this system coming on through and of course with tornadic activity you would expect that to be the case. All right, let's take a look at what's going on in downtown Sioux Falls. Heavy rain continues to fall. I suspect
expect we've gotten well over an inch just within the past half hour or so. A lot of moisture in the system. This is what we were talking about yesterday. Today we have a lot of moisture and it is now coming to roost right over the Sioux Falls area. Of course, the severe the uh, tornado watch was posted for areas northeast of Sioux Falls. But right now, cells have started to have been organized here in the Sioux Falls area. And uh, Scott, I was kind of looking at what's going on down at Lenox. Scott and Adam, looks at what's going on down there. That uh, area is looking a little suspicious to me. Well, the one thing that we, we try to do when we get uh, one of these cells to develop is we, we cannot forget about the southern fringe of things, too. And, and that's probably why it's getting some of your attention as we bring up mm -hmm. some of the velocity that's data right for there. you. Here, I'll, I'll bring it back to where okay. we were. I know you're going to go ahead and point All it out for you. <laughs> this is the area we're go. looking at right here. We're seeing a bit of a curl in the atmosphere. Go ahead and go back to velocity, Scott. Okay. Now, as we go into velocity data, you know, not much showing up on there. But you have to keep in mind, too, that the radar itself is trying to shoot through the whole storm to get to the southern flank of yeah. the storm itself. So and the other thing we have is the air is kind of parallel to the radar right now. So we're not getting actual wind speed measurements, probably, the way things are oriented. That will change as the cells moving in a northeasterly direction. Now, here is a radar product that's unique to our system. Uh, we're able to take all the shear and calculate it by rate and by time. And that gives us, uh, it's been a pretty good tool as far as showing where tornado activity is. So look for these areas in red. These are the suspect areas at the present time. Just south of Larchwood now, kind of moving into Iowa to the uh, north up toward areas east of Rowena, just about to cross the border into Minnesota. And you see, the, well, we've got a whole lot of boxes here. Basically, everywhere that you see here on your screen, we have red box, and that means a tornado warning. We also have severe thunderstorm warnings, but that's kind of a lesser concern right now. Not a lesser concern, but right now, these are areas consistent with... One of the things we look at when we see an outbreak like this, or, or a, a group of uh, th tornadoes form, has the atmosphere produced a tornado? If it has, it's more likely to produce more tornadoes, and that's kind of the assumption we're working on right here. here. So areas in red, that's where you have those tornado warnings. Areas in yellows where we have the severe thunderstorm warnings. Also keeping an eye down to the south to see, as Scott said, if there's further development down to the south, that's an area where the atmosphere is less tainted by the rainfall, if you will, a better a better able to tap into the moisture coming up from the south. So down around the Worthing area, it looks like we could also be having either very heavy rain or maybe some hail in that area. And there's a severe thunderstorm warning posted for that part of the cell as well. We should go back to the rotation detector. Scott, Adam, do you have any more information? out of uh, on the wire uh, in terms of any updates that we could have been seeing from uh, the national weather service still just showing uh for the northern warning up toward uh northern parts of harrisburg toward larchwood granite rowena mm -hmm. uh, that is still at least there for a radar indicated rotation still um no confirmed tornado on the ground for that particular cell uh, we're also keeping these uh, severe thunderstorm warning in place for Nobles and Rock County. It's a new one that just mm -hmm. got put up over toward Beaver Creek, the Ellsworth. Yeah, we should back a little bit, show the way that uh, the cells are going to continue to move yep. into southwest Minnesota. That's a new warning that just came up. That's going to be in place until 5.30 p.m. And uh, that one is also not just for uh, gusty winds and hail, but also uh, the possibility of seeing some of that rotation you mentioned before about how when the atmosphere is primed and you start to see this, it's likely you're going to be seeing more a little bit later on. Right, and one thing that's a little difficult uh, when you send spotters in the field to look for tornadoes, it's raining heavy, and it is hard to see a rain-wrapped tornado. So that's what kind of makes them a bit more dangerous is that not actually able to see where the tornado is. We kind of have to go with our instruments uh, if in a, part, in a pilot's uh, uh, language because uh, our radar is able to show where we got the wind movement. And uh, Could we pop up a velocity, Scott, again, have a look at that and see if we see anything interesting? All right. This is air that's moving toward the radar. The reds are area that's mo moving away from the radar. So we're looking for areas where we have strong winds coming toward the radar next to winds that are going away from the radar and looking for any little tiny features here. And it's a little, so is, a little is, bit is that velocity storm? Is that storm relative or? Uh, no? This is base. So you want okay. storm relative? Yeah, could you give a storm relative? I Absolutely. think that might be a little more helpful. Uh, All right. I can do that. Now here's where we're seeing a bit more activity. You see the winds pushing this way is the area in red. 
area in green pushing toward the uh, radar in Sioux Falls. And so these are the areas where the air is converging. And that's right where we're seeing that uh, potentially tornadic weather is right in those areas. And of course, uh, we have already seen the confirmed tornadoes. Just a whole lot of flashing yellow, severe thunderstorm, flashing red tornado warning. And those cells are going to continue to move in a northeasterly direction. Do we have anything more on the wire coming in? Anything new out of there, Scott? Uh -huh. Service in Sioux Falls has issued a severe thunderstorm warning for Rock County in southwestern Minnesota, southwestern Nobles County in southwestern Minnesota, until 5.30 p.m. At 4.48 p.m., a severe thunderstorm was located over Valley Springs, or 12 miles east of Sioux Falls, moving east at 40 miles an hour. Hazard, 70 miles an hour wind gusts and quarter-size hail. Source, radar indicated. Impact, hail damage to vehicles is expected. Expect considerable tree damage. Wind damage is also likely to mobile homes, roofs, and outbuildings. This severe thunderstorm will be near Hills and Beaver Creek around 5 p.m. Laverne around 5.10 p.m. Blue Mountain State Park around 5.15 p.m. Adrian and Lismer around 5.30 p.m. Other locations impacted by the severe thunderstorm include Magnolia and Steen. A tornado watch remains in effect until 9 p.m. for southwestern Minnesota. Remain alert for a possible tornado. Tornadoes can develop quickly from severe thunderstorms. If you spot a tornado, go at once into the basement or small central room in a sturdy structure. For your protection, move to an interior room on the lowest floor of a building. A tornado watch remains in effect until 9 p.m. for southwestern Minnesota. Repeating, a severe thunderstorm warning has been issued until 5.30 p.m. for the following counties in Minnesota, Nobles and Rock. As an Adam, you were able to show that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, uh, what you're looking for move through. Yeah, again, what you're looking for is those areas in red. Uh, that's where the, we've got the radar doing some computations and sifting through the clutter. And so, looking at these areas right around the Larchwood area, that's a potentially tornadic part of that cell. That's where the radar is telling us we have winds that are uh, doing some twisting and gaining of speed. And uh, so that's right uh, where we have suspected tornado potential right there, just to to the west of Leicester, Iowa, has continued to move in a northeasterly direction, and uh, we have the tornado warnings yep. that are still in effect, Adam. Now, both of these tornado warnings are now being listed as radar-indicated rotation. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing observed or confirmed on the ground as of the latest updates for uh, either of these two warnings. Again, both of these uh, set to expire at 5.15 p.m. So, key phrase there, again, like we said, radar-indicated rotation. We still have yep. a lot of that shear east of Larchwood, uh, also east of Harrisburg, right along the river. You see those darker shades of red mm -hmm. just about ready to cross into Lyon County so we are still getting a decent amount of shear with these uh, particular cells so there's storm uh, relative velocity one more time for you oh, thank you all right so so here's the situation the radar observed it's kind of hard to see with all the heavy rain that's been going around so uh, since these cells have already produced tornadoes I would give that a little bit more heightened attention because uh, we do have the already uh, an atmosphere that has produced tornadoes so it's likely to produce more. We have plenty of energy, and it is moving off in a northeasterly direction. The strongest part of the storm cells are now passing east of the Sioux Falls area, and that trend is going to continue. Looks like, do we have a yep. new severe thunderstorm warning there? Uh, we have a new severe thunderstorm warning. This is for Lyon and Sioux County in Iowa, the Nobles and Rock. This will be until 5.45 p.m. Central Daylight Time, also including portions of Minnehaha County. Uh, that is the newest warning. It's uh, this larger box, well, actually not this larger box. It's going to be a new box that comes up uh, in just a moment. But we also have an update to the tornado warning that was in for 
uh, Lyon and Rock County. Yeah. It's, uh, Lincoln County has been taken out of the tornado warning, of mm -hmm. both tornado warnings now. Uh, still radar indicated rotation. This storm has been picking up velocity, now moving to the east at 65 the miles sails, per hour. Along. You better put, uh, can you put a regular reflectivity on there? Absolutely. Velocity is a little hard to see. I think this yes. is easier to imagine. Yep. The Got big the storm cell. Where you see the red now, this is the rain that is falling. Where you see purple, that's either very heavy rain or probably some hail that is mixed in. So now we're not looking at the winds inside of the storm. We're looking at the actual raindrops within in the clouds and that is moving in an easterly direction as uh, Adam was saying now primarily the the prime tornado threat now just moving across the river into Iowa and into Minnesota we uh, it looks like the heavier rain is now kind of easing a bit in the Sioux Falls area I'll be interested to look and see what kind of rainfall tolls we get because we had gushes of rain coming down right here in the city I suspect we have gushes of rain still continuing to fall down around the Harrisburg area and points to the south the whole cell is moving in a northerly direction, northeasterly direction. As we've been saying, as Adam mentioned, a bit of picking up the speed of uh, the potentially tornadic parts of those cells. Uh, areas in uh, red are where we do have the, um, the tornadic activity and also kind of the leading edge of that storm. And if, if that's moving, and indeed, as Adam was saying, about 50 plus miles per hour, we're looking at uh, those areas. Uh, Lester, Laverne, Canaranzi, Magnolia, and Ellsworth. Those are in, uh, well, Lester's in Iowa, uh, Laverne, Canaran's, I, Magnolia, and Ellsworth are in the southwest corner of South Dakota. Just to let you know what's coming your way, if you're just tuning in, we have had confirmed tornadoes here in uh, the greater Sioux Falls area, I'll call it, the southeastern tip of South Dakota. We have had heavy rain. We have severe thunderstorm warnings that are in effect. Areas flashing in yellow. We have uh, areas in red have been tornado warnings. Most of the tornadic activity is now east of the Sioux Falls area and moving in a northeasterly direction, moving into northwest Iowa and into southwest Minnesota. Here's the Sioux Falls area. Here's the state line right here. And this is the Iowa line right there. So the big storm system is moving off in a northeasterly direction. And yeah, watching that area between Lennox and Canton, starting to see a little bit of a a little bit of something maybe trying to get its act together yeah, right that's, between just east of I-29. That's an area we've been taking a look at. It's not favored. It's kind of on the, the wind field has been disrupted a little bit by the first passing cells, but it certainly does look a little suspect, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks like it's at least trying to trying to get something going since the atmosphere is decently primed already, even yep. though we have seen the activity roll through He's similar talking areas. About that appendage right there, because you can kind of see some motion of some of the rain, hail or rain, and probably both, uh, kind of wrapping around it in a, uh, a little a bit of uh, around the updraft there, which is uh, to the northwest of Canton and uh, south of Harrisburg. And that's something we'll keep an eye on. Scott, what do you have over there? Well, as we continue to monitor these storms, East of Sioux Falls, uh, we are watching the wires here and trying to get any new information. Uh, I believe I, I just heard from Brian uh, near the Canton area, and he said that uh, he's experienced some, some damage around there. I'm not quite sure as the extent of that damage, um, but I've also heard... If you get them, let's put them on the air, will you, yep. Scott? Yep. Just let me know when you have them. Uh, Flashing yellow boxes, severe thunderstorm warnings, which those do continue. Areas southeast of Sioux Falls, south and southeast of Sioux Falls. The flashing red is the severe th the uh, tornado warnings, and that's this part of we have a the uh, storm cell. We have warning. seen and we have had a tornado observed in those areas earlier, so the atmosphere is certainly very capable in those areas. Scott, did you have something? Oh, uh, we got a new tornado, new tornado warning, warning yeah. that just came up. Okay, uh, where's that? Indicated this is for Murray, Nobles, Pipestone, and Rock counties until 5 30 p.m. Uh, for this part of the cell, cell just north and west of Laverne headed toward Hardwick. And this is moving east at 50 miles per hour. So let me quickly uh, get it. So track moving on very this. quickly. Uh, here's Hardwick, Minnesota, which you just mentioned. That's Edgerton. Everything moving very quickly, uh, very rapid rate. The new tornado warning. I'm assuming this was radar indicated. Yes. yes that okay. is correct. Radar indicated. Not a surprise there. Uh, and uh, so. Bring up the uh, rotation detector. Uh, there, uh, sure. Yeah, sure. Right there we go. Thank I mean, it picks it up Let me right clear there, out. Uh, near Laverne. This is yep. Laverne area. Right over yeah. Laverne. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at is the rotation inside of that thunderstorm as we do get closer into this area, too, uh, to give you an idea. It's the Laverne area. And this is the newest tornado warning yep. that we do have, uh, including the Laverne area. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and you can see just right about where uh, Jay's been talking about, you see those darker shades of red just on the northeastern side of Laverne. That's where we're really getting uh, some of that rotation, some of that shear really setting up shop. Even when we start to see shades of yellow within that red, that's when we really can start to get uh, that rotation in place. So we are seeing that at least there's our regular indicated rotation again just north and east of downtown Laverne. This is a very fast moving storm through southwestern portions of Minnesota. Again, 50 miles per hour to the north and the east. So there really isn't going to be a whole lot of time if you are just a little bit east or headed toward Magnolia, uh, points east along 240th Street, north and okay. east. You are going to want to seek shelter immediately from this. Okay. Can you, uh, Adam, can you pop up reflectivity? Scott, Absolutely. you have uh, Brian Karstens, meteorologist Brian Karstens right, on their Brian, phone. Brian, we are going to uh, put you on air. Why don't you go ahead and describe what uh, you experienced okay well we're just north of canton um and we had a lot of destructive wind here i would say at least 80 to 90 miles per hour winds we've got crops are flat we have uh, numerous trees that are snapped or at least a lot of limbs down that type of thing so um a lot of wind damage not any real hail here uh, but certainly a lot of straight line wind damage, nothing tornadic at our house, but uh, definitely a very destructive line of thunderstorms this afternoon. Um, we are just going to continue to plug in here on the weather. I know we're still experiencing some heavy rain here. Uh, a lot of a lot of runoff considering how dry the soil is. It's actually cooling. I can see it ponding in the road ditches here, too. Um, and I'm observing things on Highway 11 as we speak here at about 270 8th Street. So Highway 11 is 278. And again, a lot of strong winds through these areas. I'm sure a lot of it was at least 70 to 90 mile per hour winds, guys. So again, to start the thunderstorms today, and I'll continue to monitor what I'm hearing down here and, of course, relaying information as we find out more. But, uh, uh, exactly. Uh, Brian, what's your location again, please? And, uh, and do you see anything just to your north? We've been looking at the radar in that area. Yeah, Jay, I, I, sorry, you're breaking up a little bit here, but yeah, the storm, I know we saw some heavy rain here. Um, it looks to me like, based on what I'm seeing, uh, the strongest of the wind certainly uh, coming through this whole channel, this area, as I'm looking uh, up here toward down 277, there's still more trees. Uh, you can see some of the farm places. Uh, definitely there are, you know, numerous spots where trees are um, blown and there's limbs down and those kind of things. I haven't seen any evidence of tornado damage, but I'll continue to watch for that. We're just driving north right now on Highway 11 here toward the Harrisburg area. <laughs> Okay, yeah, you're right in the you're right in the heart, right to the north of you. It looks like extremely heavy rain or hail, so it'd be nice to know what that is. I'm looking at kind of the purple area for those of you uh, watching on television. There, the purple area that Brian just uh, or that Adam just moved to southeast of Harrisburg. Yeah, what he's circling right there. That's right where you are, uh, Brian, or near you. So there could be some very uh, big hail in that area. Yes, I'm going to go ahead and just pull over for the moment. We're doing fine here, but yes, I, I can observe what you're telling folks on television here right now because um, we definitely see the white streaks of the cloud here just to my north. I will also tell you, too, that uh, that wind, there's numerous uh, things that are just blown sideways. Even the railroad tracks here, uh, you can see some of the signage is blown over and just a lot of this. But it looks like folks are pulling over on Highway 11 right now, so you're just kind of letting this next cell pass to the east. But a tremendous amount of rain with it, too, uh, considering uh, what we see here. I'm even observing now some boards and things, some you know, debris from various places have been blown up on the road, too. So just a lot of wind pushing through here, a lot of crop damage. Looks like there was some hail here, too. I can see the crops are stripped a little bit more. This would be about three and a half miles uh, southeast of Harrisburg is about where we are right now. All right. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, that's the area we're looking at right here. We see those purple colors. That's what he's talking about. Uh, Brian said he saw probably a little bit of hail there, but also very strong winds and, of course, very heavy rain in that area as well. That's uh, southeast of Harrisburg. About three and a half miles is exactly where uh, the area that Brian was talking about. That's where we're seeing, seeing this purple shaded area, which means heavy rain or hail in that area. Uh, let's back out just a little bit, show the big picture. We have a lot to review here. We have uh, numerous.
numerous severe thunderstorm warnings and, of course, tornado warnings. Now, uh, the latest just in, Scott, looks like uh, two east of Harrisburg, a funnel cloud was reported at, well, 445. That was a half hour ago. But uh, in, in any event, notice some rotation overhead. And, uh, yeah, we've been seeing some rotation within that storm cell. Let's go back to the rotation tracker, if we can, Adam, see what we have going there and see what we can find out. Uh, uh, also, one of, pardon me, uh, pardon the interruption on yeah, that one. So first of all, you want the rotation detection, correct? Yeah, let's see that. We'll and see what's going on. And the, uh, the update I have for you was that there's, they're apparently noticing a lot of circulation in the Magnolia area. Actually, a, um, a preliminary report uh, five miles east of Laverne on I-90, uh, taking a Zooming in a little mm -hmm. bit near Magnolia, right yep. around there, seeing a lot of decent circulation uh, with this particular cell. Right. And now we're looking at is a, a particular, particular thing out of our radar system that uh, does calculations, tries to strip away the noise, stripping away the rainfall and the hail. And we're looking strictly at winds, the way winds are changing direction with time and space. It's a, a specialized product, but it's really good at picking up uh, uh, tornado development and tornado tornadic type of air and this is the exact area that Adam was just talking about right around well here's Laverne here's Magnolia uh, I-90 right between the two of them so anybody's on I-90 right now is I'm sure experiencing some very strong winds or maybe even worse uh, flashing red it is in a tornado warned area uh, and uh, well all the boxes are coming together right now it's uh, the the all you need to know is these areas right here, particularly susceptible to a tornado or tornadic activity. Uh, we have had confirmed tornado. So uh, just the fact that it's radar indicated doesn't make it any less of a threat because we've already had an atmosphere that has produced a tornado. So that's the type of uh, thunderstorm that is particularly dangerous. All right, can we zoom out just a little bit? I know Scott is working on uh, so, uh, trying to develop some products out there. Let me just give you as long as we have kind of a clean picture here. A red box, tornado warning, that's the one that was just issued into southwest Minnesota. And now the cells have picked up speed, and uh, that's posted until 5.30. Adam just did the, uh, the the query there on that cell. We also have this red box. This is areas east of Valley Springs. That's from the cells coming across the border out of southeastern South Dakota. Also coming out of South Dakota, now northwest Iowa, that red box there. That's the tornadic part of the storm cell system. And uh, those are going to be in effect for the next half hour or, well, a little bit longer into southwest Minnesota. So just to let you know, this situation is uh, uh, pretty dangerous on that part of the uh, storm cells. Scott, do you have something? Well, we have, let's just bring everybody back together again. Let's yes. go back to uh, our reflectivity and we'll try to sum it up here as to what we are covering right now. Now these storms are east of Sioux Falls, but they still pose a danger in the southwestern Minnesota. That's where we do have the tornado warrant storm into this area, which is out until 5.30, so for another 15 minutes. We've been following the location of this one between Laverne and Magnolia, more or less right along Interstate 90. That's where we do have indications of a possible tornado with that. As we expand our view in the central portion of this storm, well, that's a severe thunderstorm warning. That's out until 5.30, so for another 15 minutes. And then for another half hour there on the southern flank of that storm near the Larchwood area, right along the border there, probably picking up some uh, very heavy rainfall. I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, some hail with that, too. In fact, as we do bring up our hail product for you, too, uh, I would suspect there east of Harrisburg and northwest of Klondike, probably looking at some hail with that storm, as well as maybe near the Edgerton area there, uh, north of Hardwick into southwestern Minnesota, which is typical if we get these tornado worn storms that have that hail core to the north side of that storm or the north, northern part of where that tornado is. So that's yeah. what we are watching, bringing everybody back together. Mm -hmm. As we expand our view, you know, this is the only game that we have in town right now. We will watch to see if we get any redeveloping thunderstorms as well as we go into the late evening hours as that main front moves across eastern and southeastern Kevin Yeah, can we uh, take a closer look around the Harrisburg area? That's, uh, you know, the remember Brian was just talking about the very strong winds and damaging winds southeast of Harrisburg. Now we're looking at winds again. We're not looking at rainfall here. We're looking strictly at winds. And it looks like there's a bit of wind shear. Brian was talking about areas southeast of Harrisburg. Now it looks like east of Harrisburg uh, uh, right now. Our, our storm tracker saying around 273rd. We do have uh, probably some very strong winds in that 
area. And uh, Brian's saying he did see some crop damage and some wind damage out of the cells. It did come through a bit earlier and uh, probably some hail with that as well based on what we were looking at as far as the uh, uh, reef, uh, the uh, radar, the normal radar product, if you will. Yeah, I'll go back to that. Uh, velocity, you? yep. Okay, here is the, here's the, again, if you're looking, here's Sioux Falls area, there's Empire Mall. So the activity is now moved east of Sioux Falls and it's about to exit, actually, exit, here's the state line into Iowa. So that is the area right there. Around Granite, we're probably getting either very heavy rain or some hail in that area as the storm cells move to the east. But we have been seeing some very strong winds and uh, when we see that kind of wind on our on our uh, uh, rotation de de detector, it can also be a sign of some uh, fairly strong damaging winds. And uh, yeah, I was surprised we got something it. punching in right behind it, uh, yep. east of Harrisburg, to bring in the winds too, just by looking at the you know your regular data here on the radar. Yep. So that's inflow into the storm system coming in the backside from the west. It helps to push the uh, storms ahead, but it could also create some uh, uh, localized wind issues, if you will, uh, uh, very strong winds. That's probably what Brian is seeing right now. Or that, and that's probably what's setting off our rotation de detector as well, is that rear inflow uh, jet coming into it. So again, on the northern side here, we do have that tornado warning out until 530. Most dangerous part of that storm as it continues to move to the east is near the Magnolia area. As we expand again, we continue with a severe thunderstorm warning until 530 in the extreme southwestern Minnesota. And then into northwestern Iowa. That too is a, is a severe thunderstorm warning out until 545. So for about another 25 minutes for the storm here across northwestern Iowa. Now, it does look like they paired a little bit of that warning off of Lincoln County county within the last about minute or so, uh, taking T and Worthing uh, out of that as the bulk of this uh, storm continues to uh, move on over to the east. They're kind of paring this down a little bit mm -hmm. as it continues to move on through, but uh, still seeing some very intense winds just east of Harrisburg, trying to uh, move our Harrisburg camera a little bit so we can get a view uh, to the east by northeast and uh, try and see exactly uh, what we can yeah. see out there, but still getting a lot of shear right between Harrisburg and Grenade. We uh, saw the shear right there not too long ago. Yeah. And I have a couple things to add to that. Uh, coming in on the uh, wire uh, to east of Harrisburg, uh, again, that was a thunderstorm wind gust estimated 70 miles an hour, Brook tr cotton tree branches blown upward and off, landing on roof of the house. Uh, train spotter to east of Harrisburg reported a funnel cloud, rotation noticed in clouds overhead, surface winds seem to be blowing upward. Uh, we have this four miles north, northwest of Worthing, public uh, thunderstorm wind damage, two semi-trucks flipped over a little south of the I-29 at exit 68. So that's right, that's the Worthing area. So a couple of uh, semis flipped over by very strong winds. And the update to that severe thunderstorm warning that Adam was talking about just a moment ago. Uh, yeah, they've cleared uh, Sioux County out of it in Iowa, but it continues for Lyon County in Iowa, Nobles in Rocky, Minnesota, and uh, the, uh, yeah, the they, they, they're trying to show uh, uh, the, the impact of uh, uh, warnings now. So they've uh, rated the damage threat as considerable with winds to 70 miles an hour and the possibility of inch and a quarter size hail. All right, look, just to bring you back up to date, if you're just tuning in, we have had some tornadic activity around the Sioux Falls area. We're compiling some damage reports that have come in. So far, we've uh, had reports of a lot of crop damage. We've had some reports of tree damage. We have had reports of a couple of semis flipped over on I-29 right here. Very strong winds recently just east of the Harrisburg area, kind of in this area. Though that part of the storm system, the brunt of that storm system looks like it's now pushing across the border, pushing across the river into northwest Iowa. This whole area from the edge of Lincoln County in the very corner of Minnehaha County to the east into Minnesota under a severe thunderstorm morning. That's the flashing yellow on your screen. The flashing red, which is up toward Minnesota, up around the Laverne area. This is a tornado warning. We have uh, noticed radar detection of potential tornadic activity here between Laverne and Magnolia. Uh, that's using strictly the radar, performing some computations on the winds being seen inside the cloud level. And that's right in this area. Could I get the rotation detector one more time? 
see what's going on there. This helps us to sift through all of the noise with all the raindrops that are falling right now. It's kind of around the Magnolia area. Also, uh, radar is a little eh, concerned about some of the winds up toward uh, a little bit further to the north in the southwest Minnesota, west of the Chandler area, north of Edgerton. Uh, so those folks, this is line, Lincoln County, Minnesota, up by the Pipestone area. So those areas will continue to see, will continue to be under the gun for possible strong thunderstorms here within the next several minutes. If you're just tuning in and in the Sioux Falls area, it looks like the strongest of the winds are now east of Sioux Falls and moving into Iowa and southwest Minnesota. Uh, we have had some pretty heavy rainfall, though, in the Sioux Falls area, in addition to the strong winds. Uh, Scott or Adam, do you have something? Uh, off the top of our head, we do, there is uh, the severe thunderstorm has now been continued for, as you said, Lyon, Nobles Rock, Lincoln, and Minnehaha County. Uh, beyond that, uh, there haven't been any new uh, damage reports that have come in as of yet. Still seeing, though, a decent amount of shear from uh, the part of the storm that we've been keeping an eye on east of Harrisburg, where we had uh, some of that inflow coming in west of Larchwood, mm -hmm. north of Klondike, still seeing a good amount of shear just uh, around the Granite area as well with that cell that's continuing to uh, move on over to the east. All right, uh, Scott, do you have something there on the radar? Could you pop up a reflectivity for him? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah, we continue to watch the leading edge of these storms. It's usually in the environment that we do have, when we've had a lot of moisture, high humidity, high dew points, we'll have to watch with some of these storms that we get that outflow, the strong winds with it, as uh, the leading edge of the rain moves through. So you folks in Adrian probably experiencing some strong winds right now, uh, maybe uh, even getting close to the Rushmore area into southwestern Minnesota as these storms continue to travel to the east. And again, we are watching that tornado warning uh, set to expire here in, in about five five or six minutes, but still looking at some very strong winds with that storm mm -hmm. as uh, these continue to move to the east. And that area there south of Grand in the northwestern Iowa to the uh, west of Larchwood, that one keeps showing up too as uh, I wouldn't be surprised to get some strong winds in that storm as well. Right now we have a severe thunderstorm warning on that one out until 545. But uh, yeah, it looks like the extreme northwestern port portion of Iowa between Granite and Klondike uh, looking pretty good there. You get some strong winds, heavy rain, maybe even some hail in that one too. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Adam, do you want to? Uh, you popped up the storm reports there. Yeah. Uh I yeah, have a couple of storm reports that you can see uh, just off to the west of the cell that's uh, starting to head off toward Larchwood. Uh, there's the uh, funnel cloud report overhead. This was east of Harrisburg that we mentioned before. That was around quarter of five. Then we had uh, some wind damage. There's the semis just uh, off of uh, exit 68 on I-29. Uh, 70 mile per hour wind gust east of Harrisburg as well with that inflow that was coming in on the back edge of that system. And even a little bit further out when this was down toward the uh, Hurley area, still seeing a couple of 70 mile per hour readings. This is from uh, earlier when the storm was still uh, way back over toward Parker, Viborg, and Hurley. And then even a quarter to half dollar size tail reported at least early on. Mm -hmm. And the reason we're showing you that is just to let you know this is what's been going on out of this earlier when it was down here. Now it's moving into Iowa, Minnesota. So just to let you folks know in Northwest Iowa and Southwest Minnesota, that's the type of stuff you're going to see. Very strong winds, maybe some hailstones, and of course the potential for tornadic activity. Maybe we should take a look yeah, at that. We actually just, got, we just got a new one too. Okay, uh, go ahead, uh, Scott or Adam. Yeah, yeah that one takes us into Nobles County. So you know, we're watching this line, and it seems like uh, these warnings are issued. They keep going a little bit farther north. So now we are looking into Nobles County, Minnesota. This is a radar indicated tornado uh, near the Adrian area. Okay. I think. I think that's the continuation of that uh, that area we we're looking at between yeah. Laverne and Magnolia. So the it's just, first one. It's the moving first. right down I-90 mm -hmm. to the east. Yep, to the east. And so that's the the whole line will continue to watch as it moves to the east. We got those little notches, yeah. li like just right to there, the just north of uh, Adrian, right there. So yeah. it, I, it's it, it's looking rather impressive on radar. And yeah. we've had these reports of damage with these storms too. So yeah, we have a lot of strong mm -hmm. winds with these storms. Now, it, even though we are we are saying radar indicated tornado you still need to see another one because there's and again farther Two to the north just came up so we have the first one uh this new one here this is a uh, hardwick edgerton wilmont and the Reading area. This is uh, Cottonwood and Murray County until 6 p.m. Again, radar indicated rotation. Uh, this was located near Chandler, seven miles west of Slayton. This is moving east at 55 miles per hour. Then we also have this new one up here. This is the one until 6 p.m. 
east of 55 and you can kind of see right about there near channel you can get that uh, that little signature just moving through yeah. the channel area headed toward Iona mm -hmm. and again a little bit south and west of yeah. Slayton. Can you pop up the wind shear right there as long as we're yes, talking about uh, the uh, tornado? Yep. Uh, oh yeah, there right it is there? right there. There we go. Yeah, that's uh, wind shear. Winds changing speed and direction and that's uh, what creates tornado. And here we are, Chandler, Minnesota, of course. That was site of a uh, uh, infamous F5 many years ago right around the Chandler area. And right now there is on the west side of the city. It looks like we've got some uh, pretty uh, strong wind shear going on consistent with which uh, with uh, the type of atmosphere that causes tornadoes. So you're under a tornado warning now there. And it's moving very quickly, as Adam was saying. These things are really broken along. They are not wasting any time at all. So this one, uh, east by northeast to 55 miles per hour. So let's do a quick track on this, see how fast this is going to get over to the Westbrook area. There is 55. So we're talking about Lake Wilson at about 530, Slayton 538, Westbrook at about 5 of 6, Curry 547, or Curie rather, and then stored in just a shade after 6 o'clock as this races up uh, to the north and east. So again, that's 55 miles per hour. It is not uh, really wasting any time headed toward, uh, again, the Slayton area as well as Curie as well. Yeah, this can be booking out of our area pretty quickly. Uh, let's go down to the south and take a look at the wind shear of that southern cell, the one that's moving along I-9. If we can't, anything going on right, right over Adrian. Adrian, right over Adrian right now. It's not as pronounced as it was earlier, but uh, these things are moving right along. I mean, there is I-90, so it's been moving right from uh, between Magnolia and Laverne. And there's Magnolia over there. The whole thing is moving in an easterly direction right along the interstate, headed toward Rushmore and eventually toward Worthington and uh, Nobles County. Of course, is involved in the uh, is uh, in the uh, tornado warning included in, in the tornado warning for that uh, for that. Uh, of that particular area of thunderstorms. All right, let's go back to uh, let's go back to reflectivity and take a look at the heavy rainfall there as well. Everything's getting pushed along. Winds on the backside of it are pushing that along. Scott before was uh, talking about the rear inflow into that thing. It is really pushing that line of thunderstorms to the east. And of course, the atmosphere is very ripe. It was a warm day and a very humid day, and both of those things contributing to the uh, uh, ongoing tornadic activity. We also just have a uh, sphere thunderstorm warning. This is kind of an all-encompassing warning as this basically covers the three areas uh, that the, the uh, tornado warnings are currently in. So Lyon and Osceola in Iowa, Cottonwood, Jackson, Murray, Nobles, Pipestone, and Rock Counties in Minnesota. Uh, severe thunderstorm watch, or warning rather, tornado possible. Obviously we have our three radar indicated warnings right in that warning. This will be until 6 p.m. Central Daylight Time as this races to the east. Yeah, what they did there is they just blanketed the whole thing with a severe thunderstorm warning, moved it to the east, and then in Embedded in that, on the, you know, the leading edge of some of those, we do have uh, those tornado warned storms too. Mm -hmm. One there near Chandler. Uh, we also have the one now probably east of Adrian. Uh, something else I do want to try to bring up for you is, you know, sometimes we're able to heighten some of the threats with this storm and we'll try to get one that's more or less highlighted here near Chandler. If we're able to root that down to the surface easily getting up to 80 mile per hour winds. I know we talked to Brian Carstens earlier in our coverage. Uh, he was uh, near the Harrisburg area, Canton area and he reported some damage. He also estimated some of the winds between 80 and 90 miles per hour. So we know that these storms can do damage. We already have a history of that and that's just telling us where we have some of the highest threats with this storm in the southwestern Minnesota. Yeah. And it's Got you just to, to explain what we're looking at right here. This is a combination. These are computers putting everything together and trying to look at the greatest threat in individual areas. You might want to go down toward the Larchwood area. We were talking about the heavy rainfall. Yeah, take a look at the hail as well. Heavy rain, hail that more or less they come together when we're looking at the radar image itself. And yeah, near the Larchwood area, probably some large hail with that. So we are looking. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, Bridget Bennett from Kelloland News is here, and I wanted to bring her into the conversation. She's been uh, getting some information together down the newsroom. Yeah, I just got off the phone with the Lincoln County Emergency Manager. He says there's been damage all over the county, but the city hit hardest right now is the Lenox area. He's asking anybody in town to please stay inside. There's trees and power lines down on the streets, blocking some of the streets and roadways in town. So if you can stay off the roads, they'd really appreciate it. Let the emergency crews clear the 
the trees off the street so they can make travel safe. Now we've heard reports there's some damage to the roof of the school in Lenox. Um, there were some people in the building when the storm came through. They are all safe tonight. No injuries being reported, but lots of street or tree and power line damage, especially in the Lenox community. There were also a couple semis on the roadway in I-29 um, and other reports we're hearing is mostly just down trees and some down power lines as well. Yeah, I think the uh, semis where that was down by Worthing, by Worthing, so just in that same area. So thank you very much, Bridget. Bridget working in uh, Kelloland News and she'll keep us up to date with uh, what they're getting in down the newsroom. Uh, Adam, can you show us uh, Lennox, the area? So yep, we, right down here. Okay, so it's right uh, kind of in the center part of your screen. So just to let you know that uh, that area has got a lot of damage in it from winds and uh, of course, uh, as she was saying, some pretty widespread wind damage, tree type stuff in Lincoln you, County. Let me take you back in time on that one so we can um, just exactly see what would have been right, right around there when we had the initial warning coming up. Uh, it was right around here we had the um, confirmed tornado uh, in the Lenox area. That was around 4.30 p.m. when we started to uh, really start to see that damage really take hold. That was around, that's actually just about an hour ago. Okay, let's reset the situation. Can you give us a, uh, uh, a give us a loop there of the reflectivity moving off into Minnesota now? Okay, uh, here's a one hour loop. All right. Here's the situation right now. Storms blew through Sioux Falls, especially areas south of Sioux Falls. We have had, as Bridget was saying, a lot of wind damage, particularly down toward Lenox, but also other parts of Lincoln County. Meteorologist Brian Carson is reporting down uh, southeast of the Harrisburg area. We're seeing some crop damage, some tree damage. Uh, as we just mentioned, the Worthing exit out on Interstate 29. We had a couple semis flipped over. And this is what is now moving off to the northeast into Minnesota. We have had, uh, early on in the event, there was a confirmed tornado. We did have a funnel cloud confirmed outside of Harrisburg to the northeast a bit earlier. This is this red is very heavy rainfall, so it's going to be very difficult for any kind of uh, uh, spotters or chasers to be able to see tornadic activity. But certainly, we have had the wind. We still have the winds going at the present time. The brunt of the cells now have moved east of the South Dakota border into southwest Minnesota and the far northwestern tip of uh, northwest Iowa. Maybe we could have a look at our wind shear product, take a look at what we uh, label the rotation detector, but also we can see some uh, pretty good winds uh, uh, accumulating in that area. Yeah, now Chandler and Slayton, uh, I noticed as we were doing the, um, the loop over the last hour, a uh, pretty decent signature just to quickly go back over on reflectivity. You notice that uh, that little hook that's coming in just around Chandler, Iona, and Slayton. Put that over with your uh, rotation detector, and that's right where we are getting a decent amount of shear, right between Chandler and Slayton. All right, that area, southwest Minnesota. And the one thing that, I don't know if it's good or bad, but it is what it is. They are moving very quickly, uh, very strong winds pushing those away to the northeast at the present time. Uh, so uh, yeah. that's area number one. Now down to our south, let's see what's going on of that southern part of the south. Looks like we're man, starting to lose it as, a bit. It's not as organized as it was earlier around the Adrian area. Uh, looks like the winds are blowing, though, behind that behind uh, to the east of Adrian right now. We're getting some indication, maybe some strong winds in that area. Uh, so uh, we're not done with it yet, but this whole storm is moving off to the east. Let's see if we can see anything. Uh, Adam, why don't you pop up which live cam you have? It looks like Harrisburg. Yeah, all's that all's is, quiet uh, right now, isn't yeah, it? That is a view northeast from our camera in Harrisburg as this comes along. There so that's go. trying to head up out toward uh, southwestern Minnesota from a very, very much distance. And earlier we had, of course, very strong winds in that area. Uh, all kinds of uh, issues with winds and probably heavy rain and potentially some hail. Do we have anything else out of, uh, uh, let's see, what do we have there? Uh, let's see, what are you looking at right now, Adam? Uh, this is, uh, I've got the uh, camera from Great Bear trying let's to get that pivoted to the northwest. Can we pop that up? Is that possible? I, 
Um, I don't know how he's got that set up. I take the Harrisburg thing off and put it off. Uh, let's see. No, I, I, can, I can get that for okay. you. I've got this in. Uh, in All right, we're show. trying to show you what we were seeing from our great bear cam looking off to the east into, uh, into Minnesota. And uh, that's what that looks like there. So you see that that's where the uh, business part of the system is now in uh, moving off into southwest Minnesota as the storms continue to move quickly off to the northeast. Scott, do you have something there? Well, go ahead and bring up the reflectivity. Um, All right. It looks can do. very impressive there. Last time I, I, I looked at it near the uh, Slayton area. Yep, that you, little. You can see, yeah, I mean, just go ahead and call it what it is. Probably a little hook there on the northern side of this whole cell as uh, that is that tornado warning that we are following with that. But also, uh, we did this before near Edgerton. That's probably the strong winds working in behind that cell, too. So probably still experiencing some strong winds uh, near the Edgerton area, moving to the east here, uh, pushing through that thunderstorm, trying to uh, uh, push this forward. And it's moving very quickly, 55 miles per hour to the east. So we have a history with damaging winds with this. Uh, I believe the Harrisburg area reported uh, numerous trees down. Uh, Lennox area. Uh, we talked to Bridget about that. Uh, she had some damage reports coming into the Lennox area as well. And these storms now really concentrated here across southwestern Minnesota, the leading edge of these storms where we do have those two tornado warnings out. I believe they're both out until six o'clock and they're still coming in as radar yep. indicated both tornadoes. Six. And there's also we have a new severe thunderstorm warning that actually just came up within the last two or three minutes. A uh, lion in Rock County for this particular cell right here. This is going to head up to Toward Laverne. This will be in place until 6.15 p.m. Uh, no tornado possible verbiage. Uh, large hail, though, not out of the question. Uh, radar indicated half dollar size or more. Uh, again, this will be uh, toward the Laverne area just a shade after 6 o'clock as this moves up to the northeast at 30 miles per hour. Yeah, that's the, uh, this is in an area which is not favored for a tornadic wind setup. It's kind of the back side of it. Uh, it could be some strong winds, though, whenever you get to a big hail or anything like that, you can get some uh, momentum transfer for down to the ground, so there could be some gusty winds, but also right around hills, probably a hail threat right in that area coming out of that storm cell that is now moving in a northeasterly direction. It's kind of following that uh, parent storm uh, up into southwest Minnesota. Yeah, there's our uh, there's our hail product. Uh, you had mentioned uh, the potential for for some hail with uh, that particular storm, but right there, that white bullseye just south and west of hills. Uh, picking up on at least the hail core within that cell as it moves up toward uh, the hills and Laverne area. And that's the part of the storm we were talking to with Brian when he was making his way, I believe, toward Harrisburg and it was moving to the east and then we were following it near Larchwood saying this has heavy rain possibly for some large hail with it too. And that last product we brought up uh, that Adam just highlighted there with our, uh, with our radar able to indicate any hail inside of these storms. Anytime we get a white spot like that, that indicates that yes, we do have some hail with it. Now, once we start to see that spot leave. Well, that means it's more or less dumping that hail out. So over the hills area in the southwestern Minnesota, be prepared for hail if it's not already falling. All right, to uh, bring, in, bring everybody back up to date to reset the there situation we as, well, as well. We have had a broad area of severe thunderstorms move through southeastern South Dakota, now exiting South Dakota into southwest Minnesota here and northwest Iowa right here. Flashing yellow boxes where we have severe thunderstorm warnings, which is most of any of the areas where you see yellows or reds indicating heavy rainfall and potentially some hail activity, especially down right around hills. And it looks like maybe that hail is falling out of that storm right now over the hills area and it could be very large hail indeed. Earlier on, when those cells were in southwest Minnesota, we had a confirmed tornado. We have lots of wind damage has been reported. Uh, Brian, meteorologist Brian Carson is reporting wind damage uh, southeast of Harrisburg, especially crop damage. Maybe some evidence of some large hail in that area. Bridget Bennett from Kelloland News was just talking about all the wind damage has been reported in Lincoln County, south of the Sioux Falls area. Also, potentially a little bit of uh, 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 well, we had a couple semis flipped over in that area and lots of trees. We're going to be picking up a lot of trees over the next several hours that were knocked down by very strong winds associated with those storm cells as they pushed out of South Dakota, moving to the northeast. Hey, notice we have a, our little uh, rotation marker that will come up whenever All we get right, radar this, indicated rotation. This is Viper indicating uh, that uh, conditions are right for a tornado right around Slayton, Minnesota, that area. Kind of that notch that uh, in the storm that Adam was uh, highlighting a bit earlier and now uh, what that is is 
What it's telling us is that we are getting some spin coming into the radar, but also it's on multiple levels. So this is a little bit heightened potential for a tornado in that area based on just what we're seeing on the radar. We're getting a rotation of multiple levels throughout the column of air right around Slayton, Minnesota. So we hope you're taking cover in that area because all indications are we've got tornadic cells, I mean, uh, very strong winds at a minimum and possibly a tornado right in that area. Yeah, you see that tiny little bullseye of shear just north and west of Slate and right where we have that rotation marker. So everything kind of coming together to confirm uh, just exactly what we've been keeping an eye on there. All right, so southwest Minnesota and those are gonna be, they're gonna be moving fast. That's the that's the one thing about these. Sometimes a, a slow moving lesser tornado can cause a much uh, more damage than a strong tornado if the strong tornado is moving at a greater clip. And these are, these are moving uh, at a pretty good speed, Scott. Yeah, I'm just looking at some other computer data um, behind the scenes, more or less. Now, we'll still go through another round of strong to severe weather, according to the, you know some of the short-term models here. Uh, as we watch that main front move across eastern and southeastern Kelloland, we could see redeveloping thunderstorms. So this really isn't taking uh, much of the starch out of the atmosphere. These were the ones that had to be watched because they were by themselves before this line of thunderstorms are expected to develop this evening. That they, you know, the thinking was if we get these cells by themselves, then they do have that chance to become tornadic. And that is why we are uh, covering that right now because we've been following these tornadic cells. But I think even later this evening, there will be another round of strong to severe weather. Those storms though, do not have as high of a tornado threat as these, of course. Yeah, it, it, and just looking at it, it, it kind of looks along the the lines of what the forecast models were even saying this morning, that the broader area of rain was actually going to come to Sioux Falls between like 7.30 and 10.30 tonight. So, uh, yeah, we're not done with the rainfall. Hopefully, hopefully uh, we're getting rid of the uh, uh, energy that producing severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. That's That would be the good side of it. Uh, but it looks like we could also get some pretty decent rainfall out of it. That uh, storm cell that you're looking at now, right now, Adam, by Hills, looks like it's, well, two things. Number one, looks like it's got a pretty good hail signature with the winds pushing, uh, going around the center of that updraft there, but also uh, looks like it's now moving kind of a northeast of the Hills area, headed up uh, 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 toward Laverne eventually. Yeah, this is still moving up to the northeast around uh, 40 to 45 miles per hour. Now, starting to pick up speed a little bit, so we'll do a quick little track. This will actually ballpark. We're going to lowball it a little bit at 35 miles per hour. So we're still looking at Laverne in a little under 10 minutes for the cell. It's going to move on up, uh, headed toward the I-90 corridor. Also, Magnolia, we're looking at about 6.04 p.m., uh, getting on the uh, eastern fringe of that cell as it continues to move up uh, a little bit further to the north over toward Leota as well. Chandler, just talking about them with uh, all the rotation and the shear with the northern fringe of the parent system could still see a little bit more of this assuming it holds but uh, we had mentioned before a little bit earlier we had the uh, rotation signature up towards Slayton and Curie and Scott you have like an update? New, yeah it looks like a new warning yep. uh, with that cell they're just extending that a little bit farther to the east there as yep. these are you know on the very eastern fringe of our Kettleland area right now so yeah, the Slayton area still picking up on that rotation just to the east and northeast of Slayton that is moving to the east and again all these uh, tornado warning still coming in I believe as radar indicated but great yep. rotation being picked up here on the radar northeast of Slayton you could see that uh, with uh, Viper able to pick up on that rotation as well that spinning cylinder that you do see uh, near Slayton so these storms continue to quickly move to the east more storms still expected later this evening going into the early part of tonight but again as I mentioned before the tornado threat with those will not be as high as the tornado threat we now have. Yeah, the, the threat for later on this evening is expected to be uh, more of like a Boeing segment, kind of a damaging wind, wind mm -hmm. main uh, main threat. Always, there's, of course, always the non-zero risk uh, for like an isolated spin-up tornado in a situation like that, but more focusing, at least later this evening, on the damaging wind aspect of the, uh, of the late evening uh, round that we're gonna be keeping an eye on. Also noticing a second little uh, rotation Marker starting to come up, still really picking up on a decent bit of rotation just northeast of Slayton, uh, south of the Curie area. Again, this cell moving to the east around 40 to 45 miles per hour. Uh, put a tracker on this one so we can see uh, just exactly where this one's going to go. Uh, there is 
45 miles per hour right there. So as we uh, continue to go through Curie, uh, 548 p.m. stored in at 6 on the dot. And then this just races north and east uh, toward Comfrey and Springfield once we get beyond the 6 o'clock hour. But we are still seeing a decent bit of rotation uh, within this zone. Mm -hmm. You saw the... Uh, Cheer rate that we have mentioned just a little bit earlier, still holding rather steady as this moves up toward the uh, Devray and Curie area. Yep. Uh, he, again, we're watching Slayton here, Curry here, and right in between is where we're getting a lot of radar indication of spin. This is a, a, a dangerous situation if you happen to be in these areas. So please be taking cover and watching out in those areas. So that's what's going on within the wind. The thunderstorms have again pushed out of. South Dakota, at least for the present time. That area in red is where we do have uh, tornado warnings. And we have, are also looking at that area. Looks like uh, Nobles County catching your attention there, little Scott, a little uh, west of uh, Worthington. Of Worthington. Well, right, I think because you know this uh, is a tornado, tornado warning warned storm too as well. So you, did you just mention a new warning come out? Yeah, just as, uh, just as we got down there for Nobles County, including the uh, Worthington area, uh, this will be until 6 p.m. This is moving east at 45 miles per hour. We are just showing uh, where we had that rotation being picked up on radar just west of Worthington and that is going to be headed right into the Worthington area within the next about five or so minutes. So you guys need to uh, seek shelter immediately as this races along the I-90 corridor. Yeah, you're least. not going to have much time to uh, pick up the lawn furniture and stuff because it is really, these things have been moving very fast all, all afternoon long. So Worthington area, you are under the gun at the moment it is just uh, coming to the west side of the city. It's moving uh, right in from I-90, maybe just south of the interstate, heading right into the center of Worthington, especially around the lake is where we could be looking at problems, right around Lake Okabina. You know, also along the uh, southern portion of Worthington near U.S. Highway 59, also seeing a decent bit of shear, a decent bit of rotation picking up from that as well. You want to keep an eye out uh, down on the southern portion uh, along Worthington near the org area. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have a severe thunderstorm warning that actually just got extended uh, as we were uh, talking about that. Uh, this goes until 6.30 p.m. for the eastern portion of Nobles County, uh, even just uh, east of Slayton as well. All of these uh, in association with the parent storm or the parent line that continues to move on to the east, at a, as Jay has mentioned. A pretty decent clip. Yep. Uh, the, uh, this is a traditional radar type view again, which you see in red is probably some heavy rain. The uh, uh, spinning cylinders there show up by uh, Slate, north of Slate, and up by Curry. That is the potential tornadic part of the storm cell system. The hill, down by Hills, that is a, uh, uh, a hail signature. Looks like it looks like the hail is dro actually dropping out of that cell yeah. even as we speak. So maybe we're starting to see the demise of that storm cell. Um, as it heads up toward Laverne. And Scott, you were just talking about the rear inflow again. Well, exactly. And, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I mean, this almost looks classic to me when we got these, you know, bookend vortices, one on the northern side of this and another one on the southern side uh, near Worthington. We mentioned that one with that new tornado warning that came out. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, I mean, it's looking like a classic setup, just looking at the regular reflectivity on the radar itself. We're able to get these quick spin ups with it on the northern side and on another the southern warning side. Came up. And, and the gust front, of and course, I, on the leading edge of that. Yeah, That's and, your damaging wind. That right is there. the wind coming straight through. You mentioned the leading edge of it. We have the strong winds with it with the gust front, too, and we could easily get an, a, a, a spin up out of that as well. Let's see what the verbiage is on that latest warning. There we go. That's going to be headed toward the Wyndham area, Cottonwood, Jackson, Murray, and Nobles County until 6 15 p.m. Again, east at 45 miles per hour, capable of producing tornadoes. So, again, radar indicated rotation, the key phrase here. Uh, see further storm warnings, by the by, canceled for Lyon and Osceola County as well as pipestone and rock uh, but they're continuing the warnings elsewhere further to the east but again this whole line just racing east toward 45 to even upward of 50 miles per hour at times this is continues uh, to move on over again toward the Wyndham area there's your new tornado warning we'll put that yeah right that's about an extension there. into yep. Minnesota and you said the pipestone and rock were now being canceled that's that yep. that's what it looked like the big it was big hail over hills yep. and looked like it was falling out it was trying to get to the Laverne area right now south of Laverne it's not uh, I'm talking about this cell right here. Uh, we had a hail signature right over hills a bit earlier now as it's moved toward Laverne. Looks like it's kind of losing a little bit of its steam that it had a bit earlier. Uh, so that uh, Rock County dropping out of the first warning that we were talking about there. Uh, the tornadic, the only, correct me if I'm wrong, the only tornadic part of the storm is up to the north, right? Uh, uh, looks like around Curry.
Yep, uh, around here we still uh, have that. Northeast of Slayton, yep. and I mean, it is still producing yep. wind shear at multiple levels on our on our uh, 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 our computing equipment, if you will. And uh, so that area particularly is a, a, a dangerous spot to be right now with potential for uh, tornadic activity in that area. We haven't had anything confirmed, radar indicated, but that is no surprise because we've got rain uh, enveloping that tornadic signal you're on three sides yep. so the only three sides you could see it from are getting heavy rain the only place that you're not getting heavy rain is right where the tornado is and that's not where you want to be so uh, th those things moving off uh, kind of in an east northeasterly direction Scott so southwestern Minnesota this is the area that we continue to monitor the northern well the whole line here and matter of fact the leading edge of it with that gust front we could get a spin up with that again everything being radar indicated that's the northern right slide there east of of Slayton, we're watching that area, able to pick up on Viper, the rotation there, that spinning cylinder that you see. And then the southern edge of that uh, near Worthington, uh, we do have an uh, indication there that we could also have a spin up in and around the Worthington area with that tornado warn storm there. And there is a look at some of the rotation uh, detection being brought back uh, to the radar, Jay. All right, uh, that's what's going on at the present time. We have the uh, uh, a lot of wind damage being reported now down toward uh, uh, areas south of Sioux Falls, the Sioux Falls metro area. Can we, can we go back to reflectivity, Adam, so Absolutely. we can show the tra traditional radar view, if you will, and uh, it go toward the Sioux Falls area, if yep. you would. And, all right, we have had... All right, the rain uh, did come through the Sioux Falls area, these storms. These are all damage reports or confirmation of tornadoes or funnel clouds. Adam's just kind of going around showing what those dots are. We did have a confirmed tornado. I have seen uh, seen a couple of semis flipped over on I-29, pushed off by the very strong winds. Meteorologist Brian Carstens reports uh, wind damage to the southeast of Harrisburg. Uh, that area also looks like maybe a, a Brian reports it could be a little bit of hail hitting some of the crops in that area. Also, uh, uh, wind damage off to areas just southeast of the Sioux Falls area. But earlier, we did have report of a funnel cloud. And uh, it's been a very, uh, a group of very strong, a, a clump of big multiple uh, cells causing wind damage especially and uh, they are now quickly racing out of the Kelloland viewing area in toward southern Minnesota. All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. The tornadic threat has now eased in the Kelloland viewing area. For those of you on the fringe of the viewing area in southwest Minnesota, particularly areas east of Curry, Minnesota, where the tornado warning continues, it is now moving out of the Kelloland viewing area and moving in an easterly direction. We still have numerous severe thunderstorm warnings, rain, hail in those areas, probably some strong winds, but the cells are quickly moving away from Kelloland. So what we're going to do is we'll send you back to your regular programming. Kelloland News at 6, we're going to have a complete rundown of the damage reports into our newsroom. We have some pictures to show you, and you'll be able to see what these cells did as they pass through Sioux Falls and the southeastern part of Kelloland. So for Adam Rutt and Scott Munt, I'm Jay Trobeck. Have a good rest of your afternoon. We now join the following program already in progress. On my game, I am able to remember things and say, give it a try. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life.